Okay, good morning. Let me welcome all of you on behalf of the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung. Today is the last day of this conference, and as you've heard, my name's Eva Wuchold, and at the moment I'm leading the social rights program of our foundation in Geneva, a city where many social organizations are based, focusing on what we call the reconstruction of the world. Let me first of all thank Medico International very much for organizing this exciting and absolutely up-to-date conference. This is not the first cooperation of our foundation with Medico. We were also involved in the conference Beyond Aid, which was mentioned on Friday. But this conference is particularly important to us. We, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, have been focusing on this reconstruction of the world for the last 30 years. And the challenges, as we've heard, are enormous. The lectures of the last two days, as we've just heard, have been very interesting. And they were at a high level with many contributions. And the speakers of today are very promising again. Our foundation supports many of the approaches presented. So I'm particularly happy to be here today and to share a few ideas on this topic with you. Like all the other speakers, I'm not speaking to an audience directly, as planned originally, but I'm speaking from home in the lockdown situation. We all know that the situation of the world in 2021 is complex. The problems are numerous and go far beyond the present pandemic. I would like to point out, using a few examples, what I think is relevant for the topic of this conference, the reconstruction of the world. This list is not exhaustive, but all these points have the same importance, are all interconnected. The best thing would be a reconstruction which takes all these points into account in the same way. As time is limited, I would like now to turn to this topic directly. First of all, climate action and global cooperation. The climate crisis is serious. It's tremendous and can have serious impact on mankind and the whole world. So overcoming the climate crisis is the first indispensable condition for the reconstruction of the world. In this place where I'm speaking from is also the base of the World Meteorological Organization, publishing up-to-date data on the present situation of the world. And this data is anything but positive. So this is about climate justice, about an ecological system change and the reimbursement of losses. The climate crisis, as we heard yesterday, is a crisis of capitalism. It's the system as a whole that this is about. So-called climate action, which we need for overcoming this crisis, will require a measure of global cooperation, which we haven't experienced so far. So this certainly is a tremendous challenge. The second point I would like to make is peace and disarmament. The danger of wars and global conflict is still a concrete danger, and it is uh, reinforced by difficult social situations. We have seen countries in the crisis that were very powerful in military terms, but were not able to make enough hospital beds available. So it's obvious to me that a new initiative must would bring social and economic benefits. Just think of all the public funds that are still spent on the military. Think of the ecological footprint of the military and on the sociological impact of all of this, because this money is not spent on people. In the future, in a reconstructed world, we will need more firemen and doctors and less if not to say no weapons at all. Against the background of a reconstruction of the world, we also need to deal with the background of the power relationships, bringing about wars, reducing and banning weapons exports is one starting point, and overcoming structural violence is another. So this is about positive peace. Another point is overcoming inequality. Never before has 
wealth around the world be so high as today, and rarely has it been so unequally distributed. The latest Oxfam report shows how different the impact of the present pandemic is on mankind, whereas the 1,000 richest people were able to offset their losses during the COVID crisis within nine months. It might take decades until the poorest have recovered. 87% of the respondents, 300 economists interviewed by Oxfam, expect an increase in inequality in incomes in their countries. It was forecast that by 2020, nearly 168 million people will need humanitarian aid and protection. That's about one in 45 people. It's the highest number in decades. Studies from Britain have shown that the death rate of people suffering from COVID-19 is twice as high in low-income areas than in high-income areas. And similar results are reported from other European countries. Let's now talk about globalization. This is my fourth point. What we see as one way of reconstruction is the globalization of rights, the globalization of good practice, and the globalization of good ideas. What must not have space anymore in this field is the exploitation of people and nature. The globalizing capitalism leads to economic, political, social, and ecologic distortions. As a result, millions of people are living under disastrous living conditions. On the other hand, the globalization of rights means that globalizing capitalism is understood as a multiple power relationship. This is also about the regulation and socialization of transnational corporations, a topic which has played a great role in Switzerland last year. What exactly the globalization of rights will be like will depend on the way it is organized. And of course, it's about economic relationships, which are social, and it's about social justice. Of course, we have some good ideas, and exchanging them, this is also one of the reasons for this conference. My fifth point is free movement and free settlement in view of growing social inequality of crisis and wars, the right to global movement is another strategic field of action for a reconstruction of the world. Free movement and settlement includes the right to free movement and free settling within the area of a country, and it includes the right to leave one's own country and to, to return one's own country. Networks like Solidarische Stadt accept this right for all and are trying to bring about global social rights in the global political space. What we see in Europe is Solidarische Städte shows how political alliances can do something against the growing right wing in Europe. My sixth point is gender relationships. Enforcing the rights of women must be an important part of reconstruction if we want to change how things are going. This means that women must be able, must be enabled in real life to participate in social processes, not just uh, as a right, but in real terms, and to be involved in the reconstruction of industry and infrastructure. This also means that the social security and the economic securities of women is uh, provided. Rita pointed out yesterday that feminism is back. Feminist movements are gaining strength worldwide. Women's marches, women's strikes, Me Too, and International 8th of March activities, and a lot more. Feminist process is the most impressive transnational movement at the moment, providing a counter position to authoritarianism and right wing radicalism. It's heterogeneous and pluralistic in its themes, so it has the potential 
of overcoming patriarchal conditions in all fields which support the social degradation of women. Global solidarity is more, than, more important than ever. And this is my last point. As before, in climate change, it's mainly people of color affected by the pandemic. The danger of dying of COVID-19 is 40% higher in Brazil than for white people. In the US, nearly 22,000 black people and uh, Latin people would be alive if the risk of dying of COVID was just as high for them as for white people. This is the current situation, but this is not what we want the future to be. The benefits of reconstruction must benefit all people, especially those affected by marginalization. Global solidarity in this context means that we go beyond things and support anti-racist movements like Black Lives, Matter, Black Lives Matter in Europe as well. And to do things against uh, hunger, for example, backing food solidarity for health, we mean to strengthen the worldwide health sector, especially in the global south, and to make the necessary financial funds available. For COVID-19, this also means that the patent protection for the vaccines must be cancelled. Global solidarity means that here in Geneva, we work for the interests of our partners in, from the global south here within the UN agencies. And to give them an opportunity to do this for themselves, the idea of global solidarity becomes more specific through the concept of global social rights. The starting point is the discourse about political freedom and personal rights and economic and social and cultural rights as integral part of human rights. The fight for global social rights has great strategic potential. And they can lead to the transnationalization of social movements. In order to resolve the climate crisis, in order to reorganize our economy and to fight the COVID pandemic and to build a better future, we in all our diversity need to rediscover internationalism and renew it. All this also means reconstruction. We need to understand the capitalist world system and we need strategies to transform it. In view of the exacerbating economic crisis and the growing threat from the right, it's not always easy to believe, to continue believing in the strength of global solidarity and communication. But is there an alternative? Please take these points of my introductory remarks as a suggestion, not as an exhaustive list. I know that there are many other topics that could be included and would have to be, but I don't have the time now to talk about this. The next speakers will certainly be able to do this with much more detail. So I do hope very much that this last conference day will not the end, but the starting point of further discussions. This debate is seen as one important aspect of reconstruction and Rosa Luxemburg Foundation will happily be involved in this. But let me now, let us now all look forward to the discussions and the lectures. Let me now hand over to Anselm Franke.